if there, I think this is just, oh no, this is you as well. If there is extraterrestrial life, it's, it's nice getting your questions. I don't have to come up with questions. If there is extraterrestrial life, no matter how strange an alien it may be, there is one thing it will have in common with Earth life. It will be Darwinian. Yes, what you're doing is you're quoting... I, I, on my Substack, I mm -hmm. put up a, a sort of manifesto, and the thought, I thought of the way to do it was to put up a series of statements like that, um, just one after another. I think about about twenty of them, probably. Yeah, every one blew my mind. And 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 so that that that, and you you've been reading out a couple of them, and very nice too. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and that one was yes, if there is life elsewhere, and there almost certainly is, then it will be Darwinian. However strange it is, however alien it is, however hard it is for us to imagine the details of what it's like, I stick my neck out and say that, that one thing we can say about it, it will be Darwinian. It, it will have evolved by a version of Darwinian natural selection. I think that's the only possible way in which complexity, mm -hmm. the sort of complexity we associate with life, could come into being. Such a fascinating That's thought. open to, to re refutation by somebody who could think of a better way. Yeah. Well, that's it. I mean, we only know that one way. Yes. So we have a confirmation bias. Yes, exactly. It's, it's difficult to imagine. I suppose one other possibility, although it has, I this is a cheat, I suppose, would be artificial life that was created by... Oh, were, yes, definitely. And, and, but, but that ultimately comes from a, a Darwinian source. So, uh, yes, not just artificial life, but, but the technology generally, which, which has many of the attributes of life, the complexity of life, um, does not evolve itself necessarily. You could make a case that it does, but, it, but I wouldn't want to make a strong case for it. But if there is advanced technology on a planet, then ultimately that will have to have come from a Darwinian life form that designed it. That's a really interesting thought. Mm -hmm. Do you give much thought to the... Um is it the Fermi paradox? Um, Where are they? Yes. Where is everybody? Yes. Um, Fermi, the, the physicist who, who said, "Who said, where is where is everybody?" <laughs> um, and um, he was wondering why they haven't made contact with us, why we haven't picked picked them up. Um, you should ne you shouldn't wonder why they haven't arrived, and we're, we're never going to meet them in person. I think the distances are too great, but. Um, it's a worthwhile enterprise to scan the heavens for um, messages, and it's an active SETI. is the, the the study the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. Mm. SETI is an active project, which is, I think, well worth financing. Do you think then that when the Navy, I know the last couple of years there's been some news about they've spotted UFOs and things like that. Do you think that might be just uh, wishful thinking? Uh, yes, I, I don't believe that. Uh, I, th I think that, the, that if there is ever a first contact, it will come by radio or by electromagnetic radiation of some sort. Mm. Is that because again, I don't know much about radio and electromagnetic. Is that just the standard that they would use as well? Well, no. It's it's it, it's that that it, it it travels at the speed of light and, and it broadcasts in all, in all directions at the speed of light, and therefore, um, uh, since the, such huge distances that are involved. You, you would not expect that, that an actual physical spacecraft would happen to come here. There are just too many other places for it to come to. And, and the, 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 the probability of, 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 of this, this one, one place in the universe, Earth, being the target of, a, of an actual mission is too, is too low. But if it's being broadcast outwards mm. from some point source, um, then yes, it, it would, it's not unlikely that we would be along with everybody, everybody else, every other part of the universe, um, bathed in this message. And so we would pick it up. And yet, silence. So far, but then we haven't had the technology to listen to it for very long. And um, uh, I, I think there's quite a lot of hope that we will pick up something. Do you think that would be the greatest discovery of all time? Probably, yes. And certainly you could make a good case for that. Would you accept then if they came down and if they actually came here, but killed us all quite quickly and painlessly, that it might be worth it just for the moment of awe? Well, I, I, no, I don't think that. Uh, um, but I don't think it would happen either because I don't think, I don't think that they would be able to get here. Yeah. I mean, if, if they picked up a, re, a, a return message from us, it would probably take a thousand years to get to them, 
and and so there's, it's it's not a thing you can worry about actually physically coming here unless they've been planning it for so long uh, in secret and they use like wormholes or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I, well, yeah, okay. I I I don't know enough physics to talk about that. I suppose something that's more imminent and likely is is maybe AI. People worry about AI, artificial intelligence. Yes. I don't. One thing I don't get. Everyone's talking about. Okay, my. We need to, the problem of alignment. We have to align our concerns with theirs, or you know, so that they want to do good for humanity, which in itself is impossibly difficult because every human wants something slightly different, um, and that if we get it wrong once and they're able to self-duplicate or whatever it might be, yes. self-improve, that we're done. That's it. Yes. But I don't understand why AI would want to get rid of us or kill, or kill us. Well, it would depend upon what sort of aims were built into them, I suppose. Um, you could you could say that if you build into them, maximize the total happiness and minimize the total suffering in the world. Well, that would kill us. It might. <laughs> uh, you, you could you could make a case for for it. I think. Oh my! Is that what you were going to say when I yes. interrupted you? Sorry. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I, just a point that that that. Um, uh, depending upon what the utility function you build in is uh, you could um but but um this is very speculative i i it's a very it's a really it makes for a really sort of creepy dystopian novel that this idea that they we're, we're doing you good like oh i suppose that's how is it how 3000 in the two hell yeah, yeah. yeah yes um um do you know how hell got his name by the way no it's it's ibm one one um Letter back in, in the. Uh, oh no way! The, yes, H I. Oh, I believe you. Yes, I, <laughs> IBM. You go back, back one to H, and then. Uh, eight, um, wow, did that reflect concerns that IBM building all this computer stuff w would be the end of us? No, I don't think so. I, I think it, I think it was just a little little joke that that, mm. that that Arthur C. Clarke thought of at the time. It's creepy though, isn't mm. it? Mm. I'm afraid I can't let you do that. Or yes, something. yes, yes. Are you yes. good at accents? Uh, no, I don't think so. Do you think an AI can be sentient? I think I've got to say yes, um, but, um, but, but because we are, and we are built of physical stuff, and so there has to be some way in which uh, whatever it is that our brain has that makes us sentient must be simulatable in uh, a computer medium so if we built another richard dawkins just right here with all exactly the same stuff he could even have your memories that is a fascinating thought i think that's got to be true um and then the question philosophers like that kind of thought experiment and you start to worry about things wonder about things like um would we be that would we be exactly the same i, I think the, would we diverge from that point i suppose we would initially have exactly the same experiences and feelings um and um would one of us feel the pain of if you stuck a pin in one would would the other one feel the pain i think the answer to that is probably no um and as time goes on our experiences would drift apart and we would no longer be the same person these are I think it's quite a good thing that philosophers do this kind of thing. It's one of the things they do that I think is is quite worthwhile. These sorts of thoughts, ex thought experiments, impossible thought oh, yeah. experiments like that. Well, one of the first things about philosophy I read, I must have been about seven years old, and I read this book, and I don't remember what it was. Maybe someone will write in and tell me, but it was pink, and I seem to remember there was like an elephant on it. But it was for teenagers to read, I think, or ch or children, and it had this thing where this story where people go to Mars to sort of uh, mine for whatever they're mining in Mars every day for work. They're commuting. So they were getting into a machine and it transports them there right away, like in Star Trek or whatever it is. And then you're on Mars and you come to realize what it's actually doing is destroying you and rebuilding you as a clone, I suppose, on the other planet. And now you can't get home. You know, and the question is, would you then, would you then walk into it and Mm -hmm. and, and go back yes. home yes it's one of a family of thought experiments which i find interesting would you i, I need notice of that question yeah i think i would i would i would just have to stay on mars because mm. yes. i don't think that one of me that's created on earth I, w I don't think i'd be aware of that existence yes. no you wouldn't be aware of it no 